This is Acquisition, a 650 Senator powered by the 225 Yamaha in a bright Kermit green, features removable rocket launchers, a Minn Kota toilet, uh, a multitude of lights and is one of the most decked out 650 Senators around and it's owned by a good buddy of mine, Dan Govia. I'm Mark Cotton and this is Senator Boat Bander. Are you locked, mate? No, no, I'm on my, just on my way now. Oh, okay, cool. Is it all shiny and polished up? Yeah, it's all pretty clean, mate. It's always clean. Did you get rid of that rotten burly? Yeah, I did. It smells a bit better now. <laughs> how long? How long was? <laughs> how long was it in there for? A week. Oh God. Yeah, it must, extreme temperatures. It's not good. It must have gone supernova and uh, lost its smell by then, surely. Oh no, she was ramping up, it was bubbling when I lifted the lid off, it had popped the lids off and it was bubbling, but I don't know whether that was the maggots inside or all the early bubbling, I'm not sure. <laughs> the maggots, <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm about um, yeah. I'm about about a minute away, dude. I've, oh, cool, mate. Yeah, you, you turn, there's some new big tilt slab up, you just turn right, just past them. All right, sweet. I just got one cool. one major rule when, when I'm doing the videos, dude. Yeah. You're not allowed to tell people that you've caught you catch bigger snapper than me, okay? That's off the record. <laughs> so yeah, when, when we good. when we talk about it, your biggest snappers are uh, twenty three pounds, okay? <laughs> well in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, okay buddy, I'll see well, ya. I'll see you in a minute. Time, mate. Okay mate. See ya. Okay, mate. See ya. Okay, well finally I managed to wrangle Dan, my good mate Dan, and I'm going to go and uh, check out his Senator 650. His uh, boat was built at the same time as mine out of Haven Pleasure Boats in Nelson, and there's an article on them, uh, Fraternal Twins. The thing is, they're the same boat in length, size and everything, but they couldn't be further or so far apart difference. Um, I've got the solid doors and as you'll see with Dan, same boat but a major difference. And that's the beauty of Senator. Uh, whatever you want, they will do it. So we're about to go and uh, catch up with Dan and check out his awesome 650 Senator. The twin to mine, fraternal twins. I'll post a, I'll post a link of the article uh, below so you can check out and have a read of the article and check out the two, two different boats. Exciting mate. It's been a long time talking about it. Uh, it has been, how are you? You're good. About doing the, this video, eh? It has been a while. Fraternal Twins. So here's uh, a few of the boats. These are, uh, that's my AMF. And then I went up from the AMF to the West Coaster. Commercial boat, Dad's commercial fishing boat I grew up on longlining. And then got rid of that and went to a 10 and a half metre West Coaster. What's the boat he's still got now, so done a lot of fishing on that. Uh, charter fishing and Bit of commercial work and fishing for uh, a lot of poker and snapper and kingies and, and that uh, up at Taranaki as well. Yeah, here's some of the, the fish we were catching when we were commercial fishing. Uh, so this is out of Taranaki, out off the shelf, uh, about 70 miles offshore. So one of the things with our daughter as well, we're wanting to get her into fishing. So from a very early age, we've had her down the wharf, um, out on the boats, catching gurnard. She's now catching snapper. She got a uh, 17 pound snapper last summer, and uh, yeah, just good for them, get them out on the water. I guess the first thing is though, why did you choose a senator? I like the fact that you could modify them. When I grew up we've always had a little, the old 440 senator, mm. and I knew we've been out in some pretty big seas and caught a lot of fish out of it, and I'd seen them around, and um, I thought great value for money, great riding boat, stable, reliable, um, yeah, I guess that key thing is that ability to, to change, to customise it to what you want. I actually went through a few different uh, variations to get to this one, and it was all dictated by shed size. Oh really? Yeah. I started off, I was going to get a, um, a 580, and then I realised that I could actually fit a 620 into my shed. 
Um, you knew. And then I was talking to Andrew. The only, the main reason I was restricted to the shed before this was on the height of the shed. Yeah. So I actually got um, this rocket launcher you can take off, and then that would allow me to get it into the old shed. But I realised that the difference between a 620 and a 650 is exactly the same hole and um, size and height. It was just a little bit in the length. So. I did some measurements on the shed and I could actually shoehorn a 650 in, so that was the reason I went for a 650 in the end. I don't think they'd done a rocket launcher, uh, removable one before, but it's basically three wing nuts. So I'd come in and um, just take the three wing nuts off, rocket launcher comes off, I'd just put it down on the deck and then it would fit in the shed. A live bait tank um, with the lights inside, so I've uh, been using that a bit lately with the old mackerel and uh, herrings, mullet and that, trying to. Uh, get the elusive John Dory out here in Tasman Bay. So, uh, no, great, uh, great addition. Well, the beauty too is they don't have the holes at the back that run out the back. That's right. When I designed mine, I don't think, I don't think they'd done many in there. And so I thought they were gonna have the holes out the back, but they've actually plumbed it down the side, down through, and it comes out under the transom. That's right, because so normally below the step, aren't they? Yeah. And yeah. then, so then you lose underneath the back transom or storage space until and you're backing up in a sea. So I prefer it that way, but yeah, in a backing sea, that solid transom. With the current and you're backing up to it and keeping above the gear, you know, you get those waves coming up and over and uh, just an open transom's just not gonna work. You've got um, tuna tubes too? Yep, tuna tubes, haven't used them a lot, but um, got them all plumbed in. Uh, they do work very well um, for live car wire and that, so you can have them all bridle rigged up, ready to go to, to slip them over to a kingy or trolling kingies. All the plumbing and there's a massive big bilge pump underneath the, um, which is a big pump which feeds them both. You see all the piping down there? Yeah, yeah, no, it all, uh, all works very, very well. I guess that was other flexible thing you can do with them is Andrew asked to, to draw up basically the top of the gunnels and where I wanted the rod holders and which angle I wanted, which I did. Um, the rail blazers are just a recent addition. What about um, th three-way rod holders? Uh, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've tried, tried a couple of those. But, uh, you, you're bad with the rusting ones, yeah. aren't you? Oh, so they're they're noticeably them. different. They've changed the way they do them. Yeah. And you've got foam, foam on the sides? Yep. Yeah, foam it's a little bit soft, uh, the stuff. Um, I will look at changing it in some stage, a bit of that harder wear and stuff. Oh, the rubber? The rubber, yeah. Did you, did you have carpet? You had carpet on deck, but you've changed it to the rubber mat. Yeah, and I've, I've always had the tube matting in the sides and the pockets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've just put tube matting on the floor. So you've got this uh, deck wash standard as mine. Yep. Um, you've got lower bottom gunnel yes. there. Well, I had mine higher for tanks, but you don't do yeah. it, so you don't have no. that issue. What else have we got? Did you have got LEDs on both sides, or yep. just a one? No, um, LEDs on both sides, white and red. Oh, so, so they've got strip lights, so separate red, separate white. Oh, I'm in. Um, so if I want a working light or I want a night fishing light, um, it's quite nice to, to have that red light. And they carry on up through, right up to the front of the boat as well. And your LEDs here? Yep. Yeah, the LED lights are very good. Yeah. Um, Cheap too. Yeah, yeah. But everything else is all hella. They are good, but the LEDs are certainly uh, a very, very good value great light. So you got a fusion stereo system, yep. same as mine. Yep. What, new model or not sure? No, not. Uh, it's, it's an old one. Yep. Um, got it when the boat was built. Um, and that was the other good thing with um, with Senator. I bought the speakers and then set them up. And yep. built the speaker boxes to fit them. Just going that extra mile, I guess. Yep. And you've got grab rails on the inside yep. and running two low range 12 inch. Yep. I wanted separate units. I like having Standalone plotter, standalone sounder. Yeah. Um, and especially with these, these are the Gen 3 ones. You can, you see a patch of fish, touch your screen, it comes up on your plotter. That dash, because I knew what I wanted, and I knew I wanted 12 inch units. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't fit on a standard 650 dash. So we had to modify the dash to fit it. Yeah. So we built up a template of the size of the dash. Then we sent up the template to Senator and they built it to suit and they cut it out and everything was cut out when it turned up so basically the, the two 12 inches slotted in. So I got the extensions put onto the bunks yep. for um, if we want to do overnight. So I got the infill and the extensions with the squabs on them so that they fold down, got the squabs on and the infill in the middle. The other thing is I've got a flush toilet under the front. 
Oh. So, for not for me, for the girls. Yeah. Um, so maybe that was the reason why it's a little bit higher, just right. to, to get the, the toilet up. So yeah. they fitted it. Oh, okay. So they have down. to raise it for that. Yeah. So I bought the toilet, got a sent up there, and then they fitted it and plumbed it. So you got king queen seats. Yeah. Gym. These these I got um, filled in. Uh, the standard ones had holes on the side with a side pocket. Oh yeah. And I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to have dry storage. So got them filled in and sealed all the way around and then slightly because they also had a gap in the side of the boat so I got them lengthened because it was a waste of space otherwise. So why did you opt for open cabin instead of an enclosed cabin? The style of fishing, I like to fish and drive at the same time. Yeah. So when we're in the current and that, particularly around Stephen's Passage, and you're always holding it in reverse and I don't like sitting there steering all the time. I like to be fishing. Mm -hmm. So I can fish here. Um, this is where I normally fish when we're jigging, slow jigging. I'll fish here. Then all I have to do is I just reach forward. I've got the helm there, um, pull it in and out of gear, backing it up, staying over the gear. So that was the main reason that I went there. And closed hard tops are good, but what I ended up doing was I got some clears made up um, with the door, so that's why the sail tracks uh, oh, yeah, through true. there. That goes there, it domes down, velcros down the back here. So that comes down and it basically gives you a drop down with the door and you can roll that up and you can walk in and out and then when you're travelling close it down. So over winter I use that quite a bit and that's great in the mornings and then you've got the best of both worlds. Electric free, free fall, uh, um, Maxwell anchor winch up there. Trim tabs. Put trim tabs on it. I find a very, very good value. Uh, just put a couple of big spotlights up on the top. Got the wiper, only got the wiper on the helm side. I think mainly because Andrew hates putting them. Fly by wire for the throttle. That's, uh, that's good, you just to be careful when anyone that's not used to it grabs onto the wheel. Or it's tries sketchy to, the first time, mate. Tries to drive it, because yeah, she is pretty uh, responsive. So you got the 225 as well? Yep. That's the other thing, same motor? Yes, same motor. Oh no, you'd be heavier now than me, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I got, got the Minn Kota on. Yeah. So there's 100 kilos of batteries for that. 100 kilos? Yeah, there's three uh, three batteries, three deep cycle um, AGM batteries. So I've got them under the front squats um, and a, a plug-in shore power battery charger, which so all you have to do is just plug it in, but it actually rides a lot better with the weight in the front. It's a almost completely different boat. That yeah. extra 100 kilos in the front um, and a sloppy sea is just so solid and the ride is so much so yeah. much better. Yeah. And well, then obviously the six mile hull is probably the reason it's a bit heavier as well. Yeah, so I was with the five for the five mil. Mm. Another option, which is quite cool, eh? Go for yeah. five to six, but yep. it, it is a money thing, but you know yep. I could afford the six mil all the time. Yeah. Um, is it much more for the six mil? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think it's a lot. But I, I think, think in the end when you're trying to add everything up, that's right it all, all it all adds up. It's just when you your nut is like me and you and get carried away. I know, that's part of the fun though, is fitting it out and customising it to what you need. Uh, yeah. That gives me more enjoyment than, uh, than anything, almost as much enjoyment as going out fishing, getting it kitted up right. But you're still going, because you've just done them in Coda. Yeah. And when did you put the lights on up top? Probably just before Christmas. Yeah. And you've got underwater lights at the back? Underwater lights, yeah. What colour are they? Blue. Blue. Yeah, two nice blue underwater lights. They, uh, they're very cool, and especially at night. And that's the deluxe bait board from Senator with the drawer? Yep, yep it is. So we'll stand it, put a bit of vinyl on the side of that to, to make it fit in. And the drain, you know, the big drain is good. You know, the amount of bait boards you'll see without a drain on them or, you know, they just drain out over the back of the transom. You know, that's, it's got a nice big drain pipe, drains over the back, hose it down. The, um, talking about fish storage, the other thing I did, it can either be dry storage or fish storage is, you've got the hatch under the front, under here, yep. Um, There's quite a bit of room under there, so I got a uh, made the measurements and because it shapes down to the hull as well, measured it all up, drew a plane up, and um, got a customised insulated bag for it. Oh, that, wicked! That fits in there. It's got handles. You can lift it out, but that'll take all sorts of fish, or you can put dry clothes in there. Dude, that's genius. It is. So it keeps ice for days in there. And is it real good? Is it? Yeah, really, really good. What's your favourite fish to target? Oh, I guess I've probably got three. Snapper, Kingies and Groper. Um, I've already I asked how big you We had that rule. <laughs> Set rule not to be over 23 pounds. 
How many, how many, how many fish over 25 pounds would you say you've caught? You had one recently, didn't you? Yeah, New Year's Day, I've got one smack on 25. Yeah. Um, biggest 30? Biggest is 30. Um, I was 34 or something like that, but no, that's the biggest. In the last couple of months, I've had about three fish over 20 pounds. Mm. Like a trip, invite sometime. <laughs> You're always working. Yeah. Hey, did you used to charter out of Nelson? Yeah, I did. Back in about 2010. I was just doing charters, not full time, just part time. But it was just so hard with the weather. Yeah. A lot of people were coming from out of town, coming to want to catch kingfish. Got rid of that boat that I was running the charters out of, and, and that's when I ended up getting this one. I knew what I wanted, and I knew what I'd, I wanted to get uh, set up in it, and I just wanted to enjoy my fishing, and so I set it up to enjoy my fishing. Because you're mates with. Um... Nathan and Milan from Big Angry and have taken them out fishing. Yeah, out. they when they, they were first kingies, eh? when they were first starting um, out and they were travelling around getting a few fish and photos and videos and that before that we came they came down and we spent a couple of days up at Stevens, stayed at Wilderness Lodge. That was probably one of the reasons why I put the tuna tubes in, is because all they were doing was using whole car wine and were slow trolling and it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Mm. And we're just up and around the passage, trolling around one of the islands, and we're trolling a lure, a live cow, just bridle rigged. It was probably only maybe 20 feet just behind the back of the boat, and we're trolling along. And then Melan goes, Kingy! And then this Kingy came up, you could see it, and it was just following it. It was just a big submarine, and this mouth opened up, and it was just massive, and it just came in and devoured it. It was screaming southeast, and the current was taking us into the rocks. And I said, "We've got to get out of here. Got to get into some deep water." Mm. And he was fishing spin gear, and he just loaded it up. And I've never seen, you know, he didn't give it one inch, and we just drove it out in some deeper water. And it was just so impressive. And, uh, it was yeah, 32 kilos, I think. Upgraded the seats. Yep. Um, to the to the deluxe seats, just the comfier. Put the um, bump rail around the side. So give it that extra, gives it a bit of strength, but also coming up to the wharf and that as well. It hits that rather than hitting my vinyl. The other thing I did is, with the vinyl wrapping, got the whole hull of the boat is all vinyl wrapped, because I hate that tarnished look. Um, and also got inside of the pockets, um, got them all done as well. That looks good All around the there. seats and all up around the front there, just keeps it looking new. As you know, preserves uh, underneath the hull. It looks brand new well. underneath. Yeah. You strip it off, it's brand new. Why don't you choose the name? Acquisition. Mm. It was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek one, I guess, really, the name. I had a business here in Nelson, which I was running, and my business got acquired by the company that I'm now working for. Got acquired and acquisition and just a bit of a play on the name. Oh, well, that's uh, Dan's uh, Mighty 650 Senator. The fractal twin to mine, and it's so different, eh? Like, it, and the beauty of it is, looking at Dan, he's come up with so many cool ideas and different features. I've got to say, that looks very similar to my live bait tank, though. Yeah. Remember how we had the gag about how my side, but your side, but so much tidier than yeah. mine. <laughs> and mine. Practiced on yours. Yeah, they did. It wasn't. It was not. But hey, it is what it is. Thanks for watching, Senator Boat Banter, and that is Dan 650 acquisition. Uh, we'll see you next time.